An aspiring college student named Walt is applying for a space program to fulfill his dreams of going to Mars. Walt has already been rejected by the program 36 times because he has no adequate knowledge for the job. After sending the application via video recording, the young man returns to his part time job as a coffee shop barista. There, a talking robot named Gary is telling him to stop his obsession with the planet Mars. Suddenly, a beautiful girl comes in, ordering a latte, and smiles at him. Walt wonders if the smile means that she likes him, but the robot talks him out of this idea. That night, the aspiring young man tells his roommate all about wanting to go to Mars and live a life of adventure. His roommate tells him to stop talking like this when they go to the party later because it is depressing. At the party, Walt finds himself bored for having no one to talk to, later excusing himself to go to the bathroom. He eventually stumbles upon the owner of the house, Sophie. She is currently having a video call with her boyfriend, Calvin, who is assigned to Mars for nine more months. Because Walt is heavily obsessed with the red planet, he immediately enters her room without knocking or asking permission just to see the video call. Sophie is understandably angry with this stranger. While she drives him out of her room, Walt accidentally steps on a glowing orb that Sophie owns, infuriating her further. After the uninvited guest has left the room, Calvin's mom tells Sophie that she should be partying with the others and not just stay in her room. Meanwhile, Walt tries to make small talk with a drunk woman to pass the time, but fails miserably. Another woman named Ginny approaches him, telling him that she will be going tomorrow to somewhere that requires a big commitment. Because of this, the young man takes this opportunity to spend the whole night talking to her. From night to morning, he talks about Mars and the space program, and Ginny inquires about this obsession. He replies that it is simply an urge for him to have an adventure, and Ginny understands this. In the heat of the moment, the two share a kiss. Ginny reveals that she is actually heading to Mars and that Walt manages to convince her with his obsession. She also tells Walt that she wants to see him there soon. Walt returns to his room, slightly downtrodden from what happened. He also sees the rocket ship that will take Ginny to his dream planet. However, Ginny sends him a message on the phone, and from there, the two become long distance partners. One month later, Walt inquires about his latest space program application and insists on its approval. Sadly, the application has been rejected again for the 37th time, postponing his reunion with Ginny for another year. Although he can apply for the ticket, it unfortunately costs almost a million dollars. For this reason, Walt is disgruntled upon heading to his coffee shop job. There, Gary tells him that a depressed woman has been sitting at her table for hours now. Walt recognizes the woman as Sophie, the one whose orb he broke. Thinking that she will not remember him, the young man brings her a hot coffee, but Sophie instantly remembers him. She goes into a tirade about how hard it is to have a boyfriend for Mars. He sympathizes with her. After all, Ginny has not returned his messages for three days now. As such, they talk from day to night. During their talk, Sophie reveals that she and Calvin have known each other for eight years. And that they will create garbage eating plants after his return from Mars. Deep into the conversation, Walt learns that Sophie can afford the ticket to go to the Red Planet. Because of this, the young man urges her to go there for the love of her life, but she reveals that she has a fear of flying. However, Sophie realizes that it is not only her boyfriend, but also her closest friend that are now on Mars. For this reason, she immediately buys a ticket for tomorrow's launch, despite her phobia. She then leaves a sad Walt behind who cannot afford a ticket. While taking out the trash, Walt finally receives a video message from Ginny, who is holding the first cat on Mars. According to her, the cat snuck inside an escape pod during launch, a piece of information that Walt finds useful. He quickly packs up some food and water from the coffee shop because his plan is to sneak into one of the escape pods as well. The following day, Sophie heads into the terminal where the rocket launch will commence. Upon entering and going to the ticket booth, Walt bumps into her. There, the young man asks Sophie to tell the guards that he is a relative of hers in order to come close to the launch. Annoyed by his presence, Sophie chooses first to ignore and send him away. 
But when Walt pleads to her that it has been his dream to at least watch the launch, Sophie finally agrees. As they head to the launch pad, Walt cannot stop talking about the space program. Upon entering an elevator, Sophie awkwardly dances inside it. She tells him that it is to relieve tension due to her fear of flying. Finally, they reach the bridge connected to the rocket ship, which means it is time for them to go their separate ways. Before she goes inside, Walt gives her a plastic-covered parting gift, which she does not check. Later, when she gets inside the ship, Sophie opens the gift that he gave her, which is a plush toy. She appreciates it. After Sophie leaves, Walt executes his secret plan to sneak inside one of the escape pods, later texting Ginny that he is going there. Finally, the rocket ship launches into space. While flying, Walt cannot help but scream in terror inside the escape pod. Because of this, the AI has to tranquilize him. Sophie, on the other hand, unknowingly destroys the plush toy due to too much stress with the trip. Eventually, the ship arrives at the space station that will take them to Mars, and Sophie receives a video call from her boyfriend and other friends celebrating her arrival. As Sophie walks to her room, she spots Walt trying to pry open the air vents. She gets immediately angry at him because she will be part of the blame if people find out that Walt illegally snuck into the space station. She is so angry that she breaks his phone upon learning that he is contacting Ginny. For this reason, she takes him to her room and tells him to stay there for 35 days until they reach Mars. However, the space captain, Tartar, sees the two because the door is open. The space captain asks who Walt is supposed to be, and he quickly introduces himself as Calvin. Upon learning this, Tartar happily continues to talk with the two, even introducing them to fellow space passengers Tabby and Celeste. She then asks for his identification card, and the young man makes an excuse that it is lost. Here, Walt learns that Sophie's birthday is coming up. Despite this, the space captain does not suspect a single thing. With the captain out of the way, Sophie and Walt head into the room of the technician to request an identification card. There, a technician named Earl sees in the database that Calvin was already in the space station before. Sophie notices that Earl's robot requires fixing. Fortunately, she knows how to fix the robot because she is working on a thesis about repairing technologies. After fixing the robot, Earl happily makes an identification card for Walt with Calvin's name. Now known officially as Calvin, Walt has to study everything about Sophie's boyfriend. Throughout the days, he is having a hard time sticking to Sophie's rules, as well as people wanting to hang out with him as Calvin. One day, Sophie catches him watching his girlfriend's reply to him about going to Mars. She lashes out at him for not sticking to the plan she had set. Stressed, Walt goes out of the room and heads to Earl's room to take some ice cream. Sophie follows him so that she can prevent him from doing what he will do. But since they are already there, she helps him anyway. Upon returning to their room with two ice creams, Walt apologizes to her for their earlier arguing. Sophie accepts this apology. The two then bond over ice cream. While eating, Sophie asks Walt about his plan after reaching Mars, and the young man answers that he will probably steal another spaceship after reuniting with Ginny. But she tells him that Earth is already a spaceship hovering in space. The following day, the two attend a seminar. However, Tabby informs the audience that the speaker for the day has rescheduled for another session. Because of this, Tabby takes it upon herself to replace it with Calvin's thesis, a topic that Walt has no idea about. The audience chants Calvin's name, forcing him to go to the stage and improvise. He delivers a very quick speech about not changing the self for someone unwilling to do the same. One of the audience, Celeste, is moved by his speech, even though it is not very technical. She tells her partner, Tabby, that she should marry, and Tabby accepts. For this reason, Captain Tartar orders a mandatory engagement party for the couple. During the party, Sophie emerges with a silver dress that she made from scratch, and Walt is amazed by her beauty. He gives her a birthday muffin to celebrate her birthday, even if she thinks birthdays are not special. Touched by this gesture, she allows Walt to be himself just for tonight's party, and they dance through the night. Later on, they return to their room with Sophie tipsy due to drinking some space wine. As she rests on the bed, she asks him what they should do for her birthday. He takes this opportunity to invite her to a spacewalk with him, even though Sophie is afraid of flying. To ease her nerves, 
Walt tells her to dance with him before going outside the ship. As the door opens to the infinite vastness of space, the two jump toward the platform, which takes them further away from the ship. When the platform stops, Walt jumps and floats upward. Not wanting to be left behind on the platform, Sophie jumps and floats as well. At the top, they witness the great red planet of Mars, leaving both of them in awe and wonder. Afterward, they return to the ship. However, it seems that attraction has grown between them. All of a sudden, unidentified space debris hit the ship, causing the oxygen reserve to drop low. Captain Tartar informs the passengers that they have to dock at the nearby Mars orbital station and continue their journey via freight ships. Sophie immediately takes Walt to their room and tells him that they will check the identification cards. By checking the cards, the authorities will know that there are two Calvins. To bypass this, she has the brilliant idea of pointing Walt to the air vents. The plan is that Sophie will talk to him via their shared wireless headphones. She will guide Walt through the vents and into the station. However, the two have lost communication because Sophie's tablet has died, forcing him to improvise the direction of the air vents. Sophie later arrives at the storage room where they are supposed to meet. She calls his name but receives no reply. At this point, she is about to go into a tirade about how idiotic Walt is, but the young man suddenly appears to announce his arrival. He tells Sophie that she should head upstairs, but the young lady notices his makeshift tent, so she stays there to camp with him. Since they are camping together, Sophie suggests that there should be a view to gaze upon. They set up some holographic devices that will show them the surface of other moons in the solar system. However, Sophie instead goes for the spectacular view of the formation of Earth. Awestricken by the scene, the two are about to kiss, but they do not continue because they are committed to their relationships. Instead, the two decide to sleep, but Walt eventually wakes up to find Sophie in front of another holographic image. She tells him that she used to live in an illegal dump site with her father, but she cherishes this memory anyway because her father is already dead. Suddenly, she receives a message from her boyfriend to call her, prompting her to leave Walt in the storage room. Upstairs, Calvin tells her that they have been worried sick about her since she did not call after the spaceship incident earlier. Sophie notices that Calvin is in a different room, and her boyfriend tells her that it is supposed to be a surprise. It turns out that her boyfriend has arranged a room for her to stay in, which means that she will stay there on Mars with him. Because of this, she tells Walt that she doesn't want to help him anymore. The reason is that getting linked with an illegal passenger like him might ruin her chances of staying with her true love on Mars. Walt tells her that this is unfair because he is this close to reuniting with Ginny again. However, the young man mistakenly reveals that his relationship with Ginny has not been that long. This causes Sophie to be infuriated because his selfishness almost jeopardizes her life just for his adventure. Walt answers back by saying that Sophie is a coward because she cannot let go of Calvin, who is not willing to sacrifice things for her. As such, the two end their journey together on a sour note, with Sophie returning the plush toy from earlier. Finally, the passengers arrive at Mars. Walt is immediately arrested for illegally flying to Mars while Sophie meets up with Calvin. Afterward, she and Calvin head to Calvin's home, where Sophie is welcomed by his family. Meanwhile, Walt is detained in a small room, staying there until another rocket ship is launched back to Earth. He is visited by Ginny, but she is here to break up with him. It turns out that she has met another guy on Mars, and that they are now in a relationship. She then gives him the first cat on Mars as a parting gift and leaves. At the same time, Sophie is finally talking with Calvin and her other friends. Their topic is Walt, the stowaway. When asked if she has crossed paths with him, Sophie answers no. Calvin tells Sophie that he wants her to be part of his team, which means she will be living on Mars for a long time. Sophie does not know this and seems reluctant to continue, but she cannot say no to her boyfriend. A while later, Walt wakes up in an unknown room with a voice telling him to move. At first, the young man thinks it is the cat freaking him out. After clarifying that the voice is not from the cat, Walt takes his feline companion out of the room with him. Together, they traverse through the strange corridors where they eventually reach a big room. It turns out that the room and the voice from earlier belong to Leon Covey, 
the first man on Mars and the head of the Martian space program. Leon reveals that he has been monitoring Walt's progress since the beginning of his stowaway journey to Mars. He also reveals that since Walt was already in the spaceship, the board of directors decided for his arrest on Mars. Afterward, the young man will be taken back to Earth for imprisonment. But Leon hates the board and has decided to post his video of sneaking inside the ship, which became a global viral hit. For this reason, Walt cannot be arrested because the board will receive backlash if they arrest him. The billionaire then offers a contract to use Walt's likeness for promotional purposes in exchange for living on Mars. Walt is ecstatic and immediately signs the contract because it is his dream to live on the Red Planet. And so, Walt gets to live the life he always wants, but later realizes that it is not so great to live on Mars. Sophie, too, has realized that she is not happy here, even though she is with her boyfriend and friends. Later on, Sophie urges her boyfriend to go to a party with her. There, Calvin reiterates Sophie's recruitment to his team, and she answers that she still has to finish her thesis before joining him. Calvin tells her that she does not need to finish it because it is the past, which rather hurts Sophie. Meanwhile, at the party, Walt is getting tired of seeing people imitating his moves back when he is sneaking into the spaceship. There, the young man meets Captain Tartar again, who reveals herself as a member of the board that wants Walt out. Contrary to his expectations, he admits to the captain that his life has never changed at all. A while later, Sophie and Calvin arrive at the party, and her boyfriend immediately leaves her to meet with his team. Walt appears to talk with Sophie, apologizing for everything that happened. He then gives her a wrapped gift before leaving again. After she gets home, Sophie opens the gift, which reveals a checklist from Walt about returning to Earth, as well as the plush toy that she returned earlier. Calvin's mom sees the gift and notices that she is unhappy living on Mars. She tells Sophie that it is okay if she breaks up with her son as long as it helps her to find happiness in herself. Because of this, Sophie breaks up with Calvin. Meanwhile, Walt is informed by Leon about his plan to take the young man to Ceres, one of Jupiter's moons. Walt will become the first man there if he accepts the offer. Seeing this as another adventure, Walt accepts and later tries to contact Sophie about this news. But Walt learns that she is going back to Earth. As such, the young man quickly boards on the same spaceship that Sophie is riding. They reunite with each other, where Walt confesses to her that she is his great adventure. Finally, they share a passionate and worthwhile kiss. On the surface, the movie is a cheesy romantic comedy story about two opposites that fall in love with each other. But underneath this, the movie manages to show an interesting thing about the Mars expedition which aligns with current events. The movie showcases the idea that going to Mars is simply fueled by the feeling of adventure and conquest. It highlights the idea that instead of focusing on how to fix Earth's environmental crises, rich people will simply find another way to save themselves and not humanity as a whole by heading to another planet.